Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we're gonna do a little bit something different. Instead of covering the news, we're gonna cover something that's gonna affect us uh, very soon. We're recording this video on December 27, 2020, and Bitcoin has already breached the $28,000 mark. So we know there are good things coming. And the question that we asked in a poll recently was, what are you gonna do with your crypto when it goes parabolic in 2021. 2021 seems to be our year. It seems to be when things are going to actually happen. So what are you gonna to do to advance yourself in your cryptocurrency portfolio? And there was four criteria. We talked about, I'm not gonna sell anything whatsoever, or I'm gonna take profits, whether that be a little bit, or I'm gonna totally cash out because I've got bills to pay. The next one was I'm gonna pay everything in crypto and just let everything ride. And the last option was to take out loans. And surprising to us, 50% uh, of the votes stated, I'm not going to sell anything whatsoever. And I'm just going to let it ride. And that's fine. You can do that uh, because who knows what it's going to be out like in the future. And maybe this is something that you are saving for your kids or grandkids or something like that. So sure, we understand. The next, the next uh, most popular option was, I'm going to take profits. I'm going to cash out because I've got bills. And whether that be, I'm going to take 5% or all the way up to 100%, it just depends on what uh, your situation is. So we kind of left that open. And we got about 34% of people say we're going to do that. Now, the next one was I'm going to pay everything in crypto. And that could be the case. But just so you know, if you pay in crypto for goods or services, that's still a taxable event, uh, especially in the United States. Globally, it could be different. But in the U.S., that's how it goes. And the last option, which was surprising to us, take out loans. And only 10% of people said they were gonna take out loans. So we had to ask ourselves, what do people not know? What would people like to know? And what I did is I tried to break it down and kind of let you into my world about where I'm going to head as far as time goes on and what I plan to do with my cryptocurrencies and digital assets besides taking profits, which is gonna be a large part of taking loans and the four things I'm gonna do. So what we're trying to do in this video is we might break it down because there's so much information or we'll try to compress everything together. Just depends on how much information gets out there. So if this isn't four parts, we'll release it and let everybody know. We'll also put it into danteachescrypto.com, our 100% uh, free website. So let's jump into the computer and I can show you what I'm talking about. So let's start. These are what I call the cash out alternatives. There's a lot of different things that are out there that we could do. These are just a couple of things that I thought might interest you. Uh, first up, before we begin, these are the things that I am personally doing. There are many options for what you can do with your crypto, but that's what I'm doing. Now, your situation is different, and this might not work for you, so don't take this as financial advice because everyone is different. All right, let's jump right in. So first of all, this is going to be a video only on what to do with crypto loans. However, if you're looking to just increase the value of your uh, crypto portfolio, check out my videos on why I DCA, also called dollar cost averaging, how to stake Theta for passive income, and how to stake Cardano for, again, passive income. Now, you can find all these videos and a ton more at danteachescrypto.com. That's my 100% free website where we help everyone understand cryptocurrency and digital assets in bite-sized pieces. Also, uh, you can gain interest on your crypto by just parking at a place like uh, Celsius or Voyager. You can sign up for them and see their rates, which vary from 4.5% to 18% at my uh, handy-dandy exchange and wallet spreadsheet in the description below this video. Now, if you use links in the spreadsheet, you can get between 20 to $25 worth of Bitcoin just for signing up, so it's all up to you. So, okay, here's the question. Why crypto loans? What's the point? Why not just take profits or completely cash out like we talked about in the exit strategy video? Well, you can do all that, but I'm just here to show you just some uh, additional options. So one of the big reasons for taking out a loan on a crypto versus just cashing out is that we don't want to pay capital gains taxes and taking out a loan based on our crypto holdings is not a taxable event. I mean, just take a look right here. Capital gains tax rates, they have varied greatly. And this is just the United States. Uh, globally, they are wildly different from country to country, but we used to see a high of uh, 35% back in the 70s. They have dropped off, but with the new administration coming in, who knows what the capital gains tax rate is? And that's just the federal government. Now, remind you that if you're in America, you also have to pay additional state tax depending on where you live. So if you're in California, sorry, you got to pay an additional 10%. Texas, you got 0%, Alaska, so on and so forth. 
But again, in the U.S., capital gains tax can be uh, as high as 45% between state and federal. So we don't want to pay half of our gains to the government. Now, look, <laughs> I'm all about paying what's reasonable, and I'll, I'll, I'll always have to pay some taxes. That's just how it is. But I mean, half, half of everything? I mean, come on. So before we move on, let me briefly explain what is considered a taxable event. Now, this is exactly what is a taxable event in the United States and most major countries. Your country may differ, so check with your local laws. But this is from CryptoTrader.tax, and they beautifully lay it out in four criteria. And this is really the nuts and bolts of it. There's four times when there is a taxable event. The first one is if you trade crypto to fiat. Everybody knows that. You got Bitcoin, you sell it on some exchange, they give you some dollars, boom, taxable event. The second one is trading one crypto for another crypto. And some people think, well, okay, if I trade some Bitcoin for Ethereum, that's a taxable event. That is true. Also, if you trade any of your crypto for any stable coin, that's also a taxable event. So people, when people say, oh, I'm just going to put it into a stable coin and it's not taxable, it's not true. If you take any crypto, let's just say Ethereum, and say, I'm going to take my one Ethereum, which is like 700 bucks a day, and I'm going to put it into USDC, that's a taxable event. So you can't uh, go around that. The third one is spending crypto on uh, goods or services. And this is something I've been guilty of because uh, there was a a little snippet about uh, Elon Musk talking about uh, Bitcoin to Michael Saylor of MicroStrategy. And I said, hey, this is great. Now I can use my Bitcoin and purchase that Tesla I've always wanted. And uh, of course, uh, I was wrong. I Maybe mean, I can still do that, but of course, it'll be a taxable event because a Tesla is a good. So, uh, and of course, any kind of services, I, I did the same thing. It's a taxable event. And the last one is earning crypto as an income. And this could be if you're a miner or this is going through legislation right now, is as far as staking rewards, if you get that for you earning crypto as income, that is probably a taxable event. So those are the four criteria. So I'm doing actually two strategies to help me maximize my crypto gains, as I believe in uh, diversifying in my assets, as well as any kind of wealth building strategies that I have. So the first tax minimizing strategy is I have a crypto IRA with iTrust. This uh, makes a part of my crypto totally non-taxable. Now you can find my explainer video in the description below the video that you're watching right now. And the link looks like this. The video is about 20 minutes and takes you through the entire process. Now this is really only for US residents only. So just uh, be aware of that. But the second strategy is I'm gonna talk about is loans against my crypto. And I put them into four types of investments. Now these strategies, most anyone in almost every part of the world can take advantage of. And I'll talk about them in detail in this video but I need to make something very, very clear. And that is that when you take out a loan against your crypto, it is not a taxable event, but you must make the loan work for you and not the other way around. So uh, the money you take out must actively grow so you can pay back the loan because if you don't do that, what's the whole point? You might as well just cash out and uh, just take your crypto away. And then also the value of your crypto that you have now is not the value it will be tomorrow or in a year or five years. So some digital assets will, I mean, go up 10 to thousands of times in value. And then uh, unfortunately others will simply disappear. So it's up to you to determine uh, which ones will actually appreciate and uh, gain value. So to me, there are really four ways that I am planning to use loans to put my, to put my crypto to work for me. And those are uh, Airbnb, uh, buying houses, put them in Airbnb, Amazon FBA, businesses like franchise and self start for existing, and mortgage property loans. Now, I'm going to break down those uh, in four separate videos uh, because each one has their very specific use case. And I'm not going to do a video about exactly the specifics and fine details of how you would actually do this and run every single one. That would be impossible to do. They all have their own mastery. But what I'd like to do in this video is quickly give an overview of the four crypto loan platforms out there and what kind of a crypto loan uh, we're going to need for each one of these types of uh, loans that we're talking about for businesses. So these four crypto loan platforms are Celsius, Nexo, BlockFi, and Crypto.com. So a quick note before we start, uh, when you take out these crypto loans, just remember that you must have sufficient collateral on what you borrow. So if your crypto value goes down, uh, you're going to have to give more collateral to cover the margin, so be aware. And there are different criteria for each loans, and they will all be affected by how much collateral you put in and your interest rates that you actually get. 
Also, I'm recording this on December 27, 2020, and Bitcoin price has gone up all the way to 28,000. I believe personally that the Bitcoin price will be a bit more stable uh, this time around, thanks to large institutions adding it to their treasury and holding, like big companies such as MicroStrategy, Galaxy Digital, Square, uh, PayPal. And then you've also got the Mass Mutuals, who are a multi billion dollar company, and then uh, Jefferies, uh, which just came out, another multi billion dollar company. So they're going to be holding these types of things and not selling. So it's going to stabilize the price. And that's just for Bitcoin. I, I think with altcoins, it's going to be more of a fluctuation because there'll be more retail investors buying and selling so we will see so first of all let's start with celsius now you can do this on the celsius uh, website on your desktop and you can do all the different calculations but i find it very easy just to use my actual phone and actually things are a little bit more accurate there so when i click on uh, when i go into celsius on the bottom right hand corner i'm going to click on that and i'm going to go to i want to borrow right in the center borrow so i'm going to click on borrow and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to apply for a loan, a top left-hand corner. And I want to borrow dollars. And what's great about this is that you can put in how much you actually need, choose your collateral, and it's going to give you an interest rate. So let's just say for, you know, just for giggles, I need 500 bucks. So I need to choose the collateral. So it's going to tell you all the different things that you do not have and that you do have that you can put up uh, for collateral. So like, and I'm going to pick one of those. I'll pick uh, Ethereum. Let me grab that. So for Ethereum, I have enough if I wanted to uh, grab 500 bucks. I can have a 1% APR uh, or almost 4% or 8%. What's the difference? Well, the difference is, is how much you actually lock up as collateral. The more you lock up, uh, the lower your interest rate will be. So if I wanted to put up almost three uh, Ethereum, and right now it is December 27th, 2020, Ethereum is around $700. So if I lock up about three, that's about $2,000. So I have to 4X the collateral to get a 1% APR. That is just how it is. And then if I wanted to just, uh, you know, a 4% APR, a little bit less. And then of course, if I wanted a very high APR of 8%, all I gotta do is just lock up double what I need. So instead of uh, I, I need 1.47, that's about $1,000 to get 500 bucks. Okay, so that's what I know. So let's go back. Let's just say for example, I need $15,000. I need at least 4x to get the best interest rate. So I choose the collateral. And you know, if I had enough uh, Bitcoin, it would it would tell me here. This is just an example. So if I want one percent APR, I'd have to lock up two point two uh, Bitcoin. Right now, Bitcoin's around twenty eight thousand, twenty seven thousand. So you're looking at you know four x of what you actually need to actually put it in. And here's the thing: uh, as far as like collateral for loans for each of these places, you have to make sure that you keep the same margin. So if for some reason Bitcoin goes from 28,000 to 20,000, I'm gonna have to uh, put in more Bitcoin to keep my loan active. If not, they will liquidate it and then off I go. And this is for every single type of cryptocurrency loans. So that is how it works for Celsius. And the great thing about Celsius is that, let's just say I want this 4%. Now what's great about this is I can choose between 6, 12, 18, 20, 20 30, 36 months. So up to three years. So that's great uh, if I want to lock in that rate because who knows what's going to happen after three years. Now, I've already talked to the head of the department for loans and I said, well, what would happen if I need it for a longer term? Let's say I need it for five years or even 10 years. And she said, well, we can't lock it in. We can't lock that rate in, but it should be about the same, which uh, I, I can't totally agree with that, but okay. So I will just tell you from my experience that out of the four, uh, between Celsius, BlockFi, Nexo, and Crypto.com, this has the longest term of 36 months. That is the longest that they have. And uh, everything else is about a year. They can keep going after a year, but again, not for sure if the same rate applies. So that would be a little bit uh, tricky especially as time goes on. So just remember these rates and these terms uh, as we start to talk about Airbnb, Amazon FBA, business startup, and mortgage loan payments. So all right, that's Celsius. Now let's take a look at Nexo. So Nexo, I have an account there myself. And Nexo is pretty good. They've been around for, for quite some time. And their, their interest rates 
only start at 5.9%, uh, so a little bit higher than what Celsius has. And the way that they do this and the way they determine it, it's not how Celsius has it, where Celsius has it by you have to collateral uh, different cryptocurrency. The thing that Nexo does is it's all based on the amount of Nexo tokens that you have in your portfolio. So if you have $1,000, then if you have up to 10% of uh, Nexo tokens, uh, then you'll get the lower interest rate. Same thing with uh, gold. If you have between 5 and 10%, it's 8.9. If you have 1 to 5, you get 10.9. If you have uh, only up to 1% or lower, your interest rate is going to be uh, almost 12%. So the only way this really works pretty well is if you have a ton of Nexo and you want to borrow against it. Me personally, I have no Nexo. I don't plan to invest in the Nexo token. So this isn't an option for me, but it might be an option for you as far as like, but remember 5.9% 5, 5 isn't that great. So just letting you know about that. And the next one is BlockFi. So BlockFi, I think, is one of the worst ones from what I can uh, gather. This is from their help center. And uh, they state, our loans are structured for a term of one year and 12 months. And that's it. So after that, and, you know, Nexo is pretty much the same. They can roll over. But again, it's at 5.9%. So with uh, BlockFi, it's one year terms. After that, they can reset the terms for whatever the interest rate is. But uh, here's the example uh, that they used for a client taking just a $10,000 loan, just 10,000 bucks is all you need. If you want a 9.75% interest rate, which is the highest that they have, which is no good, uh, you're gonna need about 20,000. So again, just like we saw with uh, Celsius, it's going to be pretty high if you just have collateral, which is double what you need. Now, if you want a 7.9% interest rate, you need $33,000. So you need to 3x that. And then the best interest rate they can give you is 4.5%, which requires 5x collateral. So again, if you want to take 10000 to get a 4.5% interest rate, you're going to need $50,000 in crypto as collateral. Again, not the greatest uh, option, but again, that is a, another, uh, another uh, piece of the pie out there as far as BlockFi. And our last one, is crypto.com. And real quick for crypto.com, I mean, a lot of people love them. I, I just don't use them, but a lot of people do. But for their loans, these are the rates right now. So just like we saw on the other three, if you uh, deposit, let's just say, for example, 10,000, you can receive a credit of 5,000. So if you have you know, 10,000, which is double what you need. You say, I need $5,000 for a loan. Sure, they can give it to you, but here are the rates. And just like we saw with Nexo, you have to have their crypto.com or or crow token staked and if you have 25,000 or more CRO staked then you can get an interest rate of 8% and that's pretty much across the board doesn't really matter how much you put in loan to value whatever else it's just if you have 25,000 more they're going to give you a straight 8% if you have 2500 or less CRO you're going to get 12% and to me that are those are awful awful rates i would never use crypto.com for a loan that just sounds ridiculous so right now as it stands again december 27th uh the crypto.com coin or crow uh, is sitting around a nickel around almost six cents so five cents times twenty five thousand you're looking at around uh, twelve hundred dollars somewhere around thirteen hundred dollars somewhere around there so that's how much you would need to get the eight percent interest rate so that is the general overview of the fundamentals of crypto loans and the four platforms. Now, there are other lending places, and I welcome you to uh, discover them all. But I just want to warn you, be careful, because uh, a lending platform called Cred, which you can see right here, was all the rage not too long ago, but they overextended themselves in some very bad markets and are now bankrupt uh, with people losing their collateralized crypto. And actually, if you go right back to the website, it says to read about recent business activities, click here, you click there, and they are in bankruptcy. So all the people that had all their uh, cryptocurrency on this platform, it is all gone now. So in truth, I mean, I can only personally recommend Celsius because I've used them for some time now, uh, and I've got 15% of my portfolio on the platform. And I've taken out a very small loan just to test it out. And I'm, uh, as well as the fact that I'm also going to be taking out a large loan with them for our new investment property in Houston. And actually, that is what I did when I cashed out some of my Bitcoin, which is a very small amount, I, I feel. And I'm going to be using that to put that into the down payment of the investment property. So, so I know this video went a little long, so I'm going to break it up and talk about using crypto loans for investment property purchases and leveraging the uh, Airbnb and VRB platform as a rental vehicle in uh, our next video and over some subsequent videos and go over everything. So 
Airbnb and VRBO, uh, me and my wife have been doing this for years, and I'm going to tell you all the pitfalls and issues, as well as some best practices we went through, uh, so you can take the shortcuts. I wish someone would have told me. It would have been awesome, so uh, that'll be a pretty good video, I think. All right, so that is it for today, so thanks for watching all the way in. I really appreciate it, so let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next one.